Okay, so section 11.2 is Fourier series. Uh, you guys have already heard this term before. Does that sound familiar at all? Okay, awesome. We learned it last section. Okay, so if you remember in section 11.1, .1, we looked at orthogonal sets. So the notation for every function in an orthogonal set was phi. So that's phi n. Kind of looks like an m. It should be an n. So if phi n of x is an orthogonal set, on the interval a to b, and if f is a function defined on a to b, we can expand f We can expand f using the orthogonal set. So we'll have some constant multiplied by phi 0 of x. Then we'll have constant c1 multiplied by phi 1 of x, etc. So we said with orthogonal sets, that's generally what we're interested in. We're interested in taking an infinite, infinite orthogonal set and then we're going to take a function and we're going to write that using the orthogonal set. Anybody recall how to find C0 and C1? What we use? That we learned right before break. Isn't it like the C thing is equal to the integral? It's like the, the, the in, what's it called? The inner, whatever. It's like the inner, inner product of, of, f of f of x times bn of x dx over yeah. the yeah something like that we're just going to say determined using the inner product so this is the idea behind the Fourier series Fourier series though is going to use a very specific orthogonal set so here's what we're going to do today today we will focus on using the following orthogonal set. It'll be one, cosine of pi over p times x, cosine of two pi over p times x, et cetera. Also all the sines, sine of pi over p times x, sine of two pi over p times x, et cetera. That set of functions is orthogonal on the interval negative p to p. So then what's going to happen is we're going to have some function f of x and we are going to expand f of x using the orthogonal set above. Here's what that's going to look like. The first term will be a0 over 2. We could have just written a sub 0, but the over 2 is going to be more convenient for us later. And then we are going to have infinite, infinitely many terms that have sine and cosine in them. So it's going to be a n times cosine of n pi over p times x plus b n times sine of n pi over p times x. Okay, so we are going to need to find formulas for a sub 0, a sub n, and b sub n. Okay, might be a good idea just to start by integrating and see what happens. So we're going to integrate over the interval negative p to p.
Now we need to see if we can simplify this at all. This we cannot simplify. This we cannot simplify. These two are the ones that we are most interested in. Now, if we look at this integral, for example, is that not the same as the integral from negative p to p of 1 multiplied by cosine of n pi over p x dx? Right? Those are the same? How is that helpful? Why would I bother to write the 1 there? Why 1? Where does 1 come from? It's the first term up here? Yes. Okay. So I'm taking the integral of the first term multiplied by some other term. What is this going to be? Zero. Why? Because it's the orthogonal set. Likewise, that second or the last integral that has the sign is also going to be zero for the same idea or for the same reason. So that makes things a lot nicer for us. We're left with the integral of f of x dx is equal to a sub 0 over 2, the integral from negative p to p dx. So we get a sub 0 over 2. This will be x from negative p to p. Hopefully you recognize this will end up being 2p, but then dividing it by 2, we end up with a sub 0 times p. That's why I told you it was more convenient to use the a sub 0 divided by 2. So that gives us our first formula. a sub 0, the first term, is going to be 1 over p times the integral negative p to p of f of x dx. Okay, with me so far? Great, hopefully you are. If I go back to here, we found a formula for a sub zero. We need to find a formula for a of n and b of n. If I wanna find a of n, I need to get rid of this term somehow and this term somehow. So I'm gonna integrate, but I'm gonna have to multiply by something first. Any idea what I'm going to have to multiply by? If I integrate here, what can I multiply by to end up with two orthogonal functions? Okay, guess I'll tell you and then hopefully you see why this matters. Now we are going to multiply by cosine of m pi x over p. And then we're going to integrate. So we have the integral from negative p to p of f of x times cosine of m pi over p x dx. That ends up being a sub 0 over 2, the integral negative p to p cosine of m pi over p x dx plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, the integral negative p to p, cosine of m pi over p x, cosine of n pi over p x dx plus b sub n, integral negative p to p cosine of m pi over p x sine of n pi over p x dx. Okay, so we need to figure out which of these are going to become zero. This is not going to be. What about this integral? Zero, yes or no? Yes, this is cosine times one. So by orthogonality, that will be equal to zero. Obviously, both of these can't equal zero then because we have this whole integral then equal zero, which is not helpful. Which of these two will equal zero? First integral or second integral? Second. This is definitely going to equal zero. 
Now, this one could equal zero, not definitively though. When would this equal zero? When n is not equal to n, that's true. So this is gonna be the integral from negative p to p, or a of n times the integral from negative p to p of cosine of m pi over p x cosine of n pi over p x dx. Like we just said, that gives us two possibilities. The first possibility is that this will equal zero. This is gonna equal zero if m is not equal to n. Because if m is not equal to n, those are two separate functions then that have to be orthogonal. I will just tell you if m does equal n, all of that equals p. So this is the one that we care about. So what we end up with then is the integral from negative p to p of f of x times cosine of n pi over p x dx. We said m was equal to m, m was equal to n, so instead of an m, I can write an n, they're the same. That's gonna be equal to a of n times p. So finally, we end up with a of n is one over p, the integral negative p to p of f of x cosine of n pi over p x dx. Okay, still need to find a formula for b of n. If we were to find a formula for b of n, what do you think we would have to multiply by? If before we just multiplied by cosine, sine. So I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna show you what the result is. So similarly, if we multiply by sine of m pi x over p, and we, we integrate, you get b is gonna be one over p, integral from negative p to p of f of x times sine of n pi over p x dx. Okay, so here's where that led us to. This leads us to the definition of a Fourier series. So the Fourier series of a function f that is defined on an integral or an interval, negative p to p, is going to be f of x equals a sub 0 over 2 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a of n cosine of n pi x over p plus b of n sine of n pi x over p. Where we have those three different formulas for a sub zero, a n, and b n. a sub zero is one over p, the integra integral from negative p to p of f of x dx. All of that gives us Fourier series. Three, these three formulas here are called Euler's formulas. Okay. And something that is important for us to know, bless you, 
this <coughs> equal sign, bless you, is not a strict equal sign. It's talking more in terms of convergence. So this will converge to f of x, but they're not strictly equal. So it's just important to know that we're talking about convergence. Okay, so you can see why this is going to be a long process. You're going to have to find three different integrals. And especially if you're integrating a function times cosine or a function times sine, that could end up with us having to do tabular or integration by parts. So let's just uh, jump right in. So we are going to expand f of x into a Fourier series. f of x is going to be a piecewise function. The first function is negative x, the second one is positive x. It's, you're not always going to have a piecewise function. For some reason, though, with Fourier series, a lot of times the functions you do have are piecewise. If it weren't piecewise, you would do, the, do exactly the same as what you would normally do. First thing for us to notice is that f of x is defined on negative 2 to 2. We set up above that f of x was defined on negative p to positive p. So what this tells us is that p equals 2. a sub 0 then is 1 over p, so 1 over 2. And then it's going to be negative p to p of f of x. So in this case, two different pieces, we're going to have to have two different integrals. So this is going to be the integral from negative 2 to 0 of negative x dx. And then the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx. Okay, I'm assuming that you guys are fine integrating those. Can I just tell you what we end up with? Just in the interest of time. That ends up being 2. Okay, here's where things get less fun. Is if we go to find a of n. So a of n, if you remember, is going to be 1 over p, the integral from negative p to p of f of x times cosine of n pi x over p dx. So that 1 over p is going to be 1 half. Again, two pieces, so you're going to have two different integrals. We're going to have the integral from negative 2 to 0. f of x in this case is negative x times cosine of n pi x over 2 dx. And then 1 over p integral from 0 to 2 of x times cosine of n pi x over 2 dx. Okay, so obviously you're going to have to do tabular on both of these. Here the one that I'm going to take the derivative of is, is negative x. And then I'm going to integrate cosine of n pi x over 2. x is the variable, so n is just a constant. So if I integrate that, I'm going to get 2 over n pi sine of n pi x over 2. Integrating again, I'm going to get negative 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi x over 2. While we're at it, we might as well do the tabular that's over here. It's going to be very similar. Right side will be the same. Left side is just going to be positive. OK, so remember here. adding here you're going to subtract 
here you're adding, here you're going to subtract. Okay, so this ends up being one half. In this case, I get negative 2x over n pi sine of n pi x over 2. Subtract 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi x over 2. All of that from negative 2 to 0. Second integral, I'm going to have 1 half 2x times n pi or 2x over n pi sine of n pi x over 2 plus 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi x over 2 from 0 to 2. Okay, if I plug in 0 Plugging in 0 here will give me 0. Plugging in 0 here, I'm going to end up with negative 4 over n squared pi squared. Then I have to plug in that negative 2. Okay, if I plug in negative 2 here, I'm going to end up with sine of negative n pi, which will be 0. Here, I'm going to end up with negative 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of negative n pi. If I plug in 2 here, I'm going to end up with sine of n pi, which is 0. If I plug in 2 here, I'm going to end up with 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi. If I plug in 0, that'll be 0. If I plug in 0, this will be 4 over n squared pi squared. Okay. Here I have negative 2 over n squared pi squared. Here, this should be positive. So here I have negative 2 over n squared pi squared. Here I have negative 2 over n squared pi squared. So this will give me negative 4 over n squared pi squared. And then I have 2 over n squared pi squared cosine of negative n pi. Here, sorry, this should be positive 2. So here then I also have 2 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi. Okay, first thing we need to recognize, do we notice that these two are the same? Cosine of n pi and cosine of negative n pi are the same. All right, if you plug in 3, you're going to end up with cosine of negative 3 pi, cosine of 3 pi. Those are going to be the same. So this really gives us negative 4 over n squared pi squared plus 4 over n squared pi squared cosine of n pi. There are two different possibilities here. This could give us negative 8 over n squared pi squared. It could give us 0. When are we going to get 0 here? What is going to be true of n? Okay, let's plug in n equals 1. If we plug in n equals 1, we get cosine of 1 pi, which will be negative 1, 
So this will be negative 4 over n squared pi squared, giving us negative 8 over n squared pi squared. What happens if we plug in n equals 2? When n is even. So then top one will be when n is odd. So all of that was our A of n. Are you having fun yet? Me too. Okay, B of n. Yes. Okay, so B of n, 1 over P, so 1 over 2, integral from negative 2 to 0 of negative x, sine of n pi x over 2 dx, plus 1 half integral 0 to 2 of positive x, sine of n pi x over 2 dx. We're going to have to do tabular again. Okay, so if I integrate that sine of n pi x over 2. I'm going to get negative 2 over n pi cosine of n pi x over 2. And I'll get negative 4 over n squared pi squared sine of n pi x over 2. Over here I have negative x, negative 1, 0. So this one I'll add, this one I'll subtract. I don't really feel like rewriting this. Are you guys okay if I do tabular on the right side also? So that x will be x, 1, 0. Same idea. Here you're going to add. Here you're going to subtract. Okay, so this gives us 1 half. Here, that'll be 2x over n pi cosine of n pi x over 2. Subtract. 4 over n squared pi squared sine of n pi x over 2. That's from negative 2 to 0. Okay, and then here I get negative 2x over n pi cosine of n pi x over 2. Add 4 over n squared pi squared sine of n pi x over 2 from 0 to 2. Okay. If I plug in 0, this will be 0 because that 2x. Sine of 0 is 0. Then I have to plug in the negative 2. When I do, I'm going to get negative 4 over n pi times cosine of negative n pi. Plugging in negative 2 there will be sine of negative n pi, which is 0. Plugging in 2, I'm going to end up with negative 4 over n pi cosine of n pi. Plugging in 2 there, that'll be 0. Again, if I plug in 0, this will be 0 and 0. So over here, bless you, I end up 2 over n pi cosine of negative n pi. Over here, I end up with subtract 2 over n pi cosine of n pi. We already said those two are the same, so this ends up being 0. So again, that's your B of N. Okay, so our FOIA series expansion ends up being A sub 0 over 2. So 2 over 2. Plus the integral from N or the sum from N equals 1 to infinity of A of N cosine of N pi X over P plus B of N sine of N pi X over P. So this is 1. Subtract. 
generally anything that doesn't have an end is going to be pulled out in front. So if you guys remember our A of N was this. So I'm going to pull that 8 over pi squared out. So 1 minus 8 over pi squared. That was when n was odd. So this will be when n equals 1, 3, 5, etc. to infinity of 1 over n squared cosine of n pi x over 2. Generally, it's not going to be left this way. Generally, we're going to figure out a way to have n go from 1 to infinity, not skipping any numbers. If we expand this, we get 1 minus 8 over pi squared. Plugging in 1, 3, 5, etc. We get cosine of n pi or x pi x over 2 plus 1 over 3 squared of cosine of 3 pi x over 2 plus 1 over 5 squared times cosine of 5 pi x over 2, etc. If we were to rewrite this, we can write that as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity. If I want to go 1, 3, 5, that is 2n minus 1. And then cosine 2n minus 1 pi x over 2. Okay, this does not happen all that often where you get a 1, 3, 5. That doesn't happen very much. But now at least you've seen that, so it doesn't surprise you later. Okay, questions before we move on. So now you guys can see why your homework tonight is short because this, or doesn't have that many problems because each problem takes you a while. I have a question. Yes. So on the, in the problems for our homework, is it gonna say find A and zero, A of N, B of N, or are you gonna just make the equation and? It's gonna say find the FOIA series. Which is the F of that. Which is this, okay. yes. Okay, so the question then is what happens at the points of discontinuity? So the problem that I gave you, well, there wasn't any points of discontinuity. But if I give you a piecewise function, a lot of times there are going to be points of discontinuity. So we know that at all points where the function is continuous, this is going to converge to f of x, or f of x will converge to this. What happens, though, when we're discontinuous? So that's the next thing we need to talk about. So let f and f prime be piecewise continuous uh, negative p to p. Then for all x that are in that interval, the Fourier series of f So all of this part converges to x or converges to f of x at a point of continuity at a point of discontinuity Fourier series converges to you're going to take whatever that x is and plug it into the right side you're also going to plug it into the left piece and then you're going to take the average so you're just basically plugging it into the two pieces
So the example we just looked at, this one, at zero, we don't have a point of discontinuity, but if we did, you would plug zero in to the first function, zero into the second function, and average them. And that would be where, where you converge. Okay, we got one more thing to talk about. You guys have that in you? Okay. Last thing we need to talk about is what's called the periodic extension. So basically what happens outside the interval negative p to p. So again, here was our orthogonal set that we're working with. Okay, if we consider this first uh, function, how do I figure out the period of that function? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it a different way, but yes. What you're going to do is you're going to take 2 pi and you're going to divide it by pi over p which is the same as what Margo said. So you're setting 2 pi equal to pi over px. So this ends up being 2p, just for that one function. The period in general is gonna be 2 pi over n pi over p, which ends up being 2p over n. All of those functions have 2p in common in their periods. That tells us then that 2p is the fundamental period of the sum. And that should make sense. 2p is the largest period. This one is going to repeat before that, but also definitely at 2p. Okay, so this gives us what's called the periodic extension. Of f outside that interval. And I'm going to show you visually what I mean by that. Quick example. Let's consider the following piecewise function. Okay, are you okay if I just tell you what the FOIA series is and we don't actually find it ourselves? Okay, good answer. FOIA series ends up being pi over 4 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 minus negative 1 to the n over n squared pi cosine of nx plus 1 over n sine of nx. Okay, so first thing I want us to notice is that x equals zero. We have a point of discontinuity. Okay, so we need to figure out where this series then is gonna converge at x equals zero.
So at x equals zero, the series is gonna converge I plug in zero from the right, I plug in zero from the left, and I average them. If I plug in zero from the right, that would be this one, so I end up with pi. If I plug in zero from the left, I end up with zero. So I end up with pi over two. Another thing for us to notice is that our p is equal to pi in this case. That tells us that the fundamental period is 2p, which in this case is 2 pi. Okay, so then the Fourier series converges to pi over 2 at 0 and then every time we repeat. So that would be plus or minus 2 pi, plus or minus 4 pi, plus or minus 6 pi, etc. So visually here's what's going on. We're going from negative pi to pi. Okay, so we're told from negative pi to zero, we have zero, so that's right here. At zero, we're converging to pi over two. So let's say that it's right there. If we plug in pi to the piecewise function, we get zero. So this is what our function looks like. It's gonna repeat every two pi then. So this would be the first periodic extension. This is another periodic extension. So it's going to continue extending outside of the interval every 2 pi. Rachel? How did I get that p equals pi? From this interval here. Always going to be defined from negative p to positive p. Okay, any other questions on Fourier series?